Hey everybody, DJ Lou here, and I must be serious because I haven't shaven in a while and I'm wearing my glasses. All this is because I'm converting ALAC files over to FLAC files, and I want to talk about why. All right, everybody, before we start the video, please navigate down, hit that subscribe button, make sure you ding that notification bell as well. Also, make sure to like the video, and please, if you want to support the channel, head over to my Patreon page and subscribe. I discovered um, over the past few days that in Virtual DJ, they don't handle ALAC files um, the same way that they handle some of the other files like FLAC and MP3s. And specifically, I do a lot of tagging inside of like the remixer tag, inside you know, even like labels, because uh, I'm always meticulous, you know, putting my labels in and everything like that. And the information was not carrying over from those files, specifically ALAC files, over into Virtual DJ. And to a, a smaller extent, FLAC files as well, but nowhere near as major. So I threw a ticket in there and it doesn't look like they're going to fix it anytime soon. So I've been actually going through the process um, of taking all my ALAC files, M4As, uh, for those who don't know, and converting those over to FLAC. Now, you might have seen my video some, um, some time ago, about two years or so ago, where I actually re-ripped my entire collection as ALAC. And now I'm having to go in and uh, process all those as FLAC. Now, you don't have to do this because it is maintained in the database in Virtual DJ. But I am, albeit I'm crazy about my tagging, I'm stupid meticulous and it's to my detriment. But I want to make sure that as much information as possible is baked in to my file um, that I need to kind of manage. So what I'm going to do is do this really quick video of how I'm actually doing this conversion on, uh, on Mac OS and uh, the tools that I use and some of the process that I'm doing. So if you ever have to do this, you might be able to get at least a little bit better process and a quicker flow doing it. All right. So I've already actually done up to C. So what I'm going to do is start with D. So... Of course, I have Virtual DJ here in the background. I do also have XLD, and this is, and you've seen a couple of videos of mine in the past, this is a conversion program. Uh, they'll do everything from CD ripping over to uh, converting file format over to file format. And in this case, I'm going over from, um, from my uh, ALAC files over into FLAC. So I'm going through all my quick settings in here, just so you know, the output file format is FLAC. Um, you can choose different type of compression levels and all that. I just leave all of these as default. Um, and what I'm doing right now, you can actually have, um, you can have the program actually delete the original file after you're done, but I actually have some other things to do to make sure all my information is changed over from one file over to another. So. For now, I'm definitely just leaving this as maintaining the file. Um, I also have JCOS. Anybody that knows me, I've used JCOS for a very long time, and this is helping me in this process as well. So I'm gonna go through a couple quick batches here just to show what I'm doing as a whole. Now, with XLD, um, it doesn't allow to, you know, if there's like a root directory and all that, I just cannot bring the entire thing over and just rip it all in one quick batch. I do have to do this in smaller batches. It's all at the, uh, the folder level. So what I'm going to do is select and basically just drag into the icon. It literally takes seconds uh, to convert these all. A, uh, an ALAC file is damn near identical to a FLAC file. It's just the wrapper that's being changed. So it doesn't have to really convert or anything like that. It's just essentially changing the wrapper when it's doing this. So I want to do a couple of these really quick. A little D'Angelo here. I'm going to throw D12 as well. So that's my first step is actually making my FLAC files. So now what I'm going to do, this is when Jaco's comes in handy. I am going to go into my files. Of course, I closed that directory for some stupid reason. Me doing something stupid, imagine that. So let's dive in here. Here we go with my files. So these are the three. So 
These I can just totally drag over root and all. So I'm gonna bring these over 166 songs in there as total. I've just exposed all the tag information in this window. So it is a ton of information, but it's more so the first few parts I wanted uh, to make sure that everything was good. But yeah, you know, this is just me being super meticulous about this. Now I am sorting as file type because one of the first things I wanna do even though it did bring over the Music Brains ID when I converted over, it didn't bring over the Acoustic ID or the Discogs ID on its search. So what I'm gonna do, is 97 songs here, give or take. I'm gonna go Action Autocorrect. Now, um, I do have a, 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 um, a tutorial, better lack of a term, of when I was going through and I really deep dove um, into Jacos when I did my entire uh, uh, format, uh, or I should say my entire rip for my uh, collection going to 8 lakh. So check out the video, it's very uh, deep. I don't wanna get super deep into this. But basically all I'm doing is I'm telling Jacos to go out to Music Brains and also the Discogs, uh, which are two default uh, databases that it can go out and search. And it brings back file information over now. Almost everything's tagged exactly the way I want it anyways, but I want to make sure all those signatures basically from Discogs and Acoustic ID is embedded in the file. So I'm going to go ahead, I'm going to do this correct. And this actually shouldn't take too long. I have noticed with Jacos, it definitely, the process is sped up when you have, um, you know, full albums. If you're doing singles, it has to query over and over. It takes a little bit longer for each one. Now, as you see, it's already starting to pull stuff up. And it's pulling what, you know, people have tagged in the past, this stuff. So as you see here, like I've got uh, D12 and it has this gangster rap and hardcore. I, I always hated that kind of terminology. Um, it's not quite the way I personally want it. But we're going to go through this really quick to kind of batch all this stuff. Um, and some of the other stuff that I knew that was super important, you know, I've got, you know, my label information, which I definitely want any feature, um, you know, and this is what uh, Virtual DJ pulls, is from the Artist tab. Album Artist is actually, in this case, is what's being coalesced into the folder. Um, and, you know, everything just looks good. You know, I got, I don't know, retro, what are they even thinking? So, this is all done, it's done that quick check. Now what I'm gonna do is, I can tell um, on the left-hand side here, I've got my MP4, so these are ultimately what's gonna get deleted. But I know, like right now, I've got my original tags of East Coast and Golden Age, and this is all of the nicest stuff. So I'm actually going to go up top, figure out where it ends, copy and paste. This is how quick, you know, bulk editing can be done within Jacos. is why I really, really love the tool. You can actually do this also inside of Virtual DJ, um, but I just find visually it's a little easier to cut and paste inside a grid than having just one folder, you know, or to say one file being selected and then you're making some changes. When I'm doing some other types of changes, sometimes easier in Virtual DJ, sometimes just easier in Jayco. So it's just mental stuff. Um, D'Angelo, I think it's all gonna come out as Neo Soul, which I had before, so we're good on that. And then D12, I had it as Detroit. So we're gonna bring that over here. And voila, and that's it. Now notice, um, and this would be also with MP3s as well. When I'm converting, I um, it, it grabs most of the information. For whatever reason, doesn't grab uh, grouping. It's probably some way that the tags differ, which is probably why um, a Virtual DJ is having a problem with this tag information. So um, that's one of the things I have to worry about. But all those super, super important stuff like Composer, which is the field I use for my own personal tagging, if it's you know, a, a song I would use at a wedding for dance or a cocktail and dinner, um, all those values are stored in there. Now, I used to also store some other values in there, like if it was, there was a vinyl uh, complement that I have in my collection. I moved it over into a, uh, a database field that's only in Virtual DJ. I really wish they would populate it over. And I've been thinking maybe to use my comment tag for it. But I do um, use comments for like if I'm making a mixtape, I never want to duplicate a file. Also, um, some samples that I might not think about, like the original uh, version to the other. I put that information in the comment tag, so it's not the best field for use. 
Uh, so for now, I'm going to have to do that aspect in Virtual DJ. And that is one of the things that's unfortunately not baked into my, uh, to my music file. But I can live with it now, and I'll show you. I'm going to fix that really quick. So everything looks good. So I'm going to save off my flax. Literally take just a couple seconds. And that's it. So now my next step is going to be going into a file. So we got D'Angelo. And you'll see here, this is my original tagging. I uh, color coded everything dark green from my original uh, personal CD rips. Um, as you see, there's also this user uh, code. This is actually my physical code that I was just telling you about. Um, and this is only applicable for uh, virtual DJ. Same thing with the user one field. Um, but it did bring stuff over like, you know, the comment field. I've got the quiet storm, like one of my, uh, my mixes had this song. And again, most importantly, my composer, this is my bread and butter. I couldn't live without this. So everything looks good. And notice um, there's no label information on the original rips because that's one of the fields, one of the many fields that um, Virtual DJ will not read from and bring in to Virtual DJ. Um, and for me, again, I'm kind of a music junkie, so this is really, really superfluous stuff, but it's important to me. So now what I'm going to do in here is I'm going to simply go in here. I decided to do uh, a white uh, tag on it just to kind of give me a visualization that this is converted over um, into the new format. I know all of these are just on CD. I don't have a vinyl equivalent of it, so in this field it's going to be CD. I also clear out the remix tag. Um, I want to use the remix tag actually as explicit versus clean. And um, I actually found that was another field that the M4A wasn't uh, 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 populating back over into it. So I had done all this work to uh, tag and move and really kind of clean up my tags even more. And I had everything as explicit and clean in this field. And lo and behold, like, 2,000 or something songs did not fully come over into the remix file, which again, one of the main reasons I'm doing this is at least the majority of these tags in FLAC are being used. The remixer tag still seems to be the one field that's not being used. And I was actually gonna use this field for an energy rating. Um, and I still may still maintain in the virtual DJ database, but Again, I really, really want that information baked in. So I still might do some alignment of how I tag my stuff in here, but this is how things are going right now. So everything is good in here now. I'm going to hit OK. I know everything has uh, kind of been copacetic. I'm going to analyze and I'm going to right click and I'm going to delete. And really, it's as simple as that. I'm going to go into D nice here. I'm going to recurse. And just to show you how quick all this is, so see, these are all CDs. So again, this is very quick. Change to white, nothing's in the remix tag, so I'm good. I'm gonna analyze, delete, and so on and so forth. Now, um, you know, if there happened to be a, a CD and then comma and then VNL7 for my vinyl, for my seven inches and all that, what I normally would do is find both of the files, the file names, I would just select those two and then I would, you know, have that field. In this case, it just happens to be CD, but I would pull the information down. So it saves me a little bit of time. I'll kind of spot pick, select as many as possible and do that. Um, and I definitely have a pretty decent collection of uh, not just my LPs, but my 12 inch singles and my vinyl. And I use this as part of a uh, kind of like my uh, collaboration of if I'm ever doing a vinyl wedding, if I need to pull like special songs and all that, I might have forgotten what I actually have on vinyl. So it gives me a kind of a quick reminder of what I actually have in my collection. But that's it. I've actually gone through in the past, um, I want to say a couple hours, I've actually gone through B's and C's pre pretty quickly going through this whole process. So anybody that has these particular programs, again, a conversion program like XLD, a batch editing program like Jayco's, I highly, 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 highly recommend Jayco's has really saved my skin more than a few times with getting a lot of this information, even just like labels. Again, I'm uh, totally intricate about maintaining labels and where they came from. Um, much easier to just pull it from the database as I having to search each one manually. 
and it does all this. It pulls, I've had some CDs that didn't rip right and it, the track information didn't populate and Jayco still found the track information in it and saved me so much time. So again, highly recommend. But if you have those tools, you can also do some of these bulk editing in uh, Virtual DJ. Um, again, you would just do multi-select and then you just got the single window that you're working in. Again, not really too big of a deal. It's just I've used Jayco's for so long, some of the bulk editing is better uh, done over there. But this is what I'm doing on a Tuesday night to actually try to get rid of all my M4A files. And uh, it's a tedious process, it's a sucky process, but I think when you get a good workflow, you can hammer a lot of this out. And hopefully I can actually hammer this out really in a couple days. Uh, but I hope this gives people some direction if for some reason they do want to take their Apple lossless files and uh, bring it over. Now, other programs like uh, Serato and all that, they do less tag information on it. So I actually didn't deep dive into everything um, that might not be or may be working in Serato, but at least in Virtual DJ's instance, we definitely have some issues. All right, everybody, thanks so much for watching the video. And if you happen to like it, make sure you hit that thumbs up. It helps the algorithm. Also, make sure to hit subscribe below. Like over 90% of the people watching my videos don't subscribe to the channel, so subscribe. Um, head over to my Patreon page if you want to help support the channel as well. And actually, if you like videos like this, want to see more, go ahead. Just check out everything else on my channel. Be safe, everybody.